so good day guys welcome to today's lesson in today's lesson we are going to be talking about stability checks in start pro okay so what i've done is i've modeled a three meter cantilever retaining wall so now this is the uh, toe and the toe is one meter so from this node to this node is one meter then from this node to this node that is the heel it is three meters okay so let me confirm that so let's go to utilities let's go to node to node tools and let's go to node to node distance so from this node to this point it is one meter and from this point to this other point is three meters so the height of the stem is three meters so it's a cantilever of three meters so what i'll do now is go back to node to node tools and remove node to node distance okay now the next thing i'm going to do is assign property and you can see for my base i have a thickness of 400 then for my plate the stem i have a thickness of 300 now next thing i want to do is go to support now under support i am going to use the foundation support so double click it and create foundation support then choose plate mark then direction y direction then the subgrade modulus so what it means is that i'm using an allowable bearing capacity of 200 kilopascal so which is 200 kilopascal times a factor of safety divided by settlement so in my case now i do i want my settlement to be 15 millimeter maximum that is what i want so that is why i got 200 times 3 which is my factor of safety divided by 50 millimeter but i have to convert it to meter so that will be 50 divided by 1000 so you can see the unit here so once you are done with that you put that now next thing i'll do is go to loading and for this analysis because i'm just ch checking stability i'm not going to go into detail so the first thing i need to do is create two load keys which is lateral load keys and vertical load keys it doesn't matter if they are alive or dead but in my case i use it as none so for my lateral load keys you can see my trapezoidal load which is the soil so at the base here the maximum is 17 kilonewton per meter then at the top the maximum is zero kilonewton per meter now for my vertical load what i have there is my self-weight which is the self-weight of the structure and the weight of the soil on this point here so i have assumed for simplicity i don't want to complicate matters i've assumed that uh, there is no soil on this place there is no soil on this place but in real reality we are going to bury this base into the ground so there'll still be a soil load on this point maybe one meter or 300 millimeter whatever it is you are getting so that will just be 0 0.3 if it's 300 millimeter you are bearing it into the soil that will be 0 0.3 times the density of sand so in this case now as is the density of the soil times the height so our height is three meters and the density of the soil is 18 kilonewton per meter cube so that's why i got 54. then this other one i got 17 in the sense that we have one minus sine phi angle of friction plus one plus over one plus sine phi so i got 0 0.3 so 0 0.3 times density times the height is what gave me 16 point something so i just used the worst which is 17 to be on a safer side now after doing that the next thing i need to do is just create a load combination so lateral plus vertical i need to create that so once i'm done with that i will just come to analysis perform analysis then in this case we are not going to be talking about the flexure design that is the reinforcement design i will link my course to the one i did for the reinforcement design where you see the moment and use the moment to get the reinforcement in this lecture we are going to be doing stability checks so let's go to post processing let's run the analysis okay so let's give it a little while and remember in retaining wall or any building the three checks we do are we have the bearing pressure check after bearing pressure check we have the sliding and overturning so now the first thing we are going to do is to check the bearing pressures um, check 
So let's come to place stress. Now we are going to choose the vertical plus lateral. So select it and come to the stress type and look for base pressure. Base pressure, select it and click apply. So we can see, you can close this. You can see the contour and the values here, but don't forget the unit is Newton per millimeter square. And our soil bearing capacity, I said initially, was 200 kilopascal, which, which is 200 kilonewton per meter square. So for me to convert this to kilonewton per meter square, I have to multiply this value by 1000 so that I can get my kilonewton per meter square. Now I can see my pressure, which is red, which is the maximum, is 0 0.066, which is times 1000. That will be 66 kilonewton per meter square. And 66 kilonewton per meter square is far less than 200 kilonewton per meter square. So it means in terms of bearing stress, our structure is okay. So you can see this is almost very, this is lesser than this because there are more load. Now look at what will happen if I change the load combination, okay, the load case rather. Now for lateral load apply, you can see negative. You can see negative, okay. So what it means is that because we are using, sorry, uh, we are using the lateral load. So the lateral load is pushing the stem like this. So this is trying to overturn. So this is in tension whilst this is in compression. So that's just for lateral load alone. But what will happen if I change it to vertical load? So let's change it to vertical load and let's see the effect. So you can see there's no negative. So it means everything is compression. So you can see that we have lesser load here and we have more load here because the vertical is here. But when we put the um, active pressure, we call it the active pressure. When you put the active pressure plus this, two of them are trying to counteract each other. This is trying to stabilize it. This is trying to turn it over. So that is for base pressure. So we can see that our bearing pressure check is okay. The next thing we need to do is to check the sliding uh stability so let's see if our retaining wall is going to slide then mind you okay so let's go to reaction so it's going to bring out these bulky reactions which we are not going to use but start pro has summarized it for us which is what we are going to be using now it's going to move in this direction in the global direction that is where it's going to move you can see the global x direction so the lateral force is trying to push it to move in the global x direction. So what we need is the normal load case, that is the vertical. When you hear normal, it means the gravity load, the vertical load, that is the self-weight of the structure and the weight of all the soil going downwards. So that is the vertical. But for the lateral, it is the active pressure. And if there is a passive pressure, you can also account for it. But in our case, I'm simplifying this retaining wall. So our active that's the fy so which is 220.9 kilonewton that is the total vertical load on the structure total vertical load then total horizontal reaction that is fx i told you is pushing it in the x direction so fx is 25.5 so what we need to do is friction is a function of normal force and shearing force so we have what we can just do is the vertical divided by the horizontal force, which will give us our sliding value. But don't forget that concrete and soil, we have a coefficient of friction. So different materials will have different coefficient of friction. So in our case, we are going to assume a coefficient of friction of 0 0.4. So we'll be using 0 0.4 for that. So let's put it in our calculator. That is coefficient of friction 0 0.4 times the vertical load which is 220.9 divided by the slide in the horizontal reaction which is 25.5 so the value must be greater than 1.5 and in our case our value is greater than 1.5 so which is equals to 220.9 divided by 25.5 so pressing the calculator, we have 3.46. So it means that our shear wall is not going to slide. So we are okay with that. Then the last check is to check for overturning. Now overturning is the 
lateral pressure is trying to overturn this retaining wall which is what we, we don't want so in that case what we need to do is let's come to mz so load case one is for lateral load case two is for vertical so the vertical should be the restoring so the self weight and this should be what is restoring and our factor of safety should be greater than two so in that case we have the restoring force is 501 and the overturning mo returning moment is 501 and the restore the overturning moment is 25.5 so what we'll do in that case is to do 501 divided by 25 so since it's greater than 2 then it means that our stability check is okay for the retaining wall so thank you for watching today's video on retaining wall if you have any question you can drop it in the comment section thank you very much